Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Real Low Dad. The holidays are over with. I hope you had a great time. I had an absolutely fantastic time, but it's time to move on. We have to get ready for summer and get ready to have some fun in the yard. Now over the past couple weeks, several weeks actually, I've been dropping teasers here and there of what I've been working on and today is finally the day. We're going to show it off, show you how I built it, how I spec'd it, and pretty much everything you need to know if you want to do one of these yourself. Okay, but before we get started, I need to give shout outs to several people. First up is Connor Ward. His spreader mate clone video that he made provided me the information and details on the parts needed to complete this project. Without that list, I would have been lost and frankly probably still looking to figure out what I needed to get. Uh, second is a big Super huge shout out to Matt Martin, the Grass Factor. He so graciously donated a spreader frame from a 80 pound Lesco for this project. And he also taught me that it's okay to hide in the floorboards. Next up, and I can't leave him out, is Paul's Prime Cuts. His beauty was the inspiration for the design of this sprayer. And then finally, this is probably the biggest shout out. This goes to Green Dock of Hawaii. The man is an absolute genius. He knows what he's talking about and he fires things off instantly, faster than a Google search. So the reason why he gets the biggest shot is I asked him, hey, is there an easy to understand kind of a layman's term for sizing up and building a sprayer? And his answer was no, followed up by what do you want? And then an answer. So super huge shout out to Green Doc because he gave me the information that I was then able to go back and research and now my goal is to go ahead and put this into layman's terms so anyone can do it and get this and build it and if you want one you can have one a whole lot cheaper than buying one off the shelf. <laughs> So here it is, what y'all been waiting for, Project Squirt Life. A brief overview, the tank is a nine gallon tank I picked up from Rural King for about 50 bucks on Thanksgiving Day. Next up is the boom. The boom's constructed out of some three quarter inch conduit and it has three nozzles as you can see. The spacing is 20 inches apart and they're about 20 inches off the ground as well. Now moving around to the back, you can see the setup I did. Down here you can see a much larger pump than the one gallon pump that it came with. This here is a three gallon per minute pump, does about 55 psi and there's a pressure switch on the end that can be adjusted. I believe the manual set up to 70 psi before it cuts off. It's currently set at the factory default which I believe is 55 psi and it suits my needs perfectly. I wanted a clean looking sprayer unit. Uh, the spreader mates and other various sprayers have all these top mounted components like the pump would be on the top, the filter would be on the top, the pressure valve would be on the top, everything was on the top. So starting up first thing we have, we have our bulkhead fitting. Now this goes into the tank. I had to drill a hole, it was uh, about an inch I guess. I can't really remember what it was. All I know, I ended up using a step bit for that to get that in there. So that's just drilled through and there's a pickup hose with a hose clamp that goes down. You can kind of see the pickup hose through the shadow in there. So leaving the bulkhead, we go down into our inline mesh filter. 
This will filter out any large particulates, crap like that that's in the bottom of the tank to prevent it from going into the pump. This comes before the pump. Uh, very crucial to have one of these. Don't try to save five bucks, 10 bucks, and not put one on because it'll just destroy your pump. So now we have it go, that goes then down and around and up into the pump, then out of the pump, and then it goes up here into this little manifold guy. What I have here is the gray knob on your left is the pressure adjustment valve, and then I have a pressure gauge on the top. So, for example, say if I'm spraying at 30 PSI, this pump down here is outputting 55 PSI. Anything over that 30 threshold is going to go bypass the feed here that goes to the boom and go back into the tank and stir it up. Okay, so I have this shutoff valve. This will allow me to turn off the supply to the boom and it'll go into a direct recirculation mode and agitate the contents of my tank. So that hose just runs to the boom. Very neatly, I have it coming out through this little groove there. Again, clean install. That's what I was looking for. I saw that, I was like, we'll have the hose come up through there. Just a little T fitting. And then I have my adjustments with my quick connect nozzles. Okay, so with all the plumbing taken care of, all of that installed, I next turn my attention into the electrical component and how I'm gonna power this beast. And then I wanted to come up with a way, you know, to charge it. Many people are like, just disconnect the battery, put an SAE connector on it and just be done with it. But again, you know, coming through, I wanted a, a very clean looking design. This is something for me. I did it for me. I didn't do it for like a, the cheapest way possible just to pump it out to consumers. I didn't want to do that. I wanted something that I like that I'm proud of. So what I did is I added an SAE connector right here. And this is wired up into a main power switch above it to when it's off. It bypasses the rest of the switches and I can charge the battery through that. So what we have is when I activate the main power, this guy lights up to indicate that we're ready to spray. Okay, so now we got to take a look at the sprayer, my overall build of it, how I did things and all that. Now comes the actual most important part of it. Building it was easy, but sizing it up and getting it spec right is the critical part and this is actually the first thing you will do when you go to build one of these so the first thing we do is we take our tank size and so for the purpose of this we're using my tank size which is a nine gallon tank so we have our tank size so let's do ts is that is nine gallons now for the liquids we multiply that by zero point 0 0.05 and that comes out to a 0.45 gallons per minute. So that gives us our rate for liquids that we'll be applying. Next up, same formula but a different variable. So we're going again with 9 for our tank size. Now this one here would be for wettable granulars, uh, water dispersible granulars, and flowables. These are all, you know, dry, or they might be, but just something that requires at more agitation to keep everything in solution. So we actually multiply this here by 0 0.125, and that gives us an agitation requirement of 1.125 gallons per minute. So with the nozzles I selected, I have a range, oh, it's a, they run between 15 and 60 PSI on the charts. And so I go from a 0.24 to 0.49 gallons per minute per nozzle. So in sizing the pump, I'm gonna go with this guy here. We're going with the highest gallons per minute of the nozzle. This will give us some breathing room. I won't be spraying at 60 PSI so I know I'm going to have a whole lot of uh, wiggle room with my pump selection. So what we need to do for that is simply just multiply our 0.49 by 3 
which this here is number of nozzles. This will change if you go with a four or five nozzle boom. And with that, I get 1.47 GPMs. So then I simply just add the 1.125 and the 1.47, let's make that a plus sign. And that gives me 2.595 GPM. Well within the range of my three gallon per minute pump and even spraying at 60 it's, it, PSI, I'm still able to do that. So we got the calculations done for sizing the pump. It wasn't that bad. It's actually pretty simple. So now, this is assuming everything's been built and you're done, we have to calibrate it. Now keep in mind, as I said before, my goal was one gallon of fluid per thousand square feet. That's my, that was my ultimate goal. So now I had to figure out how much material I'm putting down. Now, it's very easy to do this. So, during my build video, I'm, the build process, I mentioned, you know, my nozzles were 20 inches apart, 20 inches off the ground, just a, that's a standard recommended spacing. With that information, I did some test passes and everything worked out. I have about a five foot or 60 inch spray, spray area. So I take that and so I need to figure out, oh, how much area, how much can I cover in a thousand square feet? So we're going to take a thousand square feet. We're going to divide that by my five feet and that equals 200. So I need to find an area where I can go 200 linear feet and that'll give me my thousand square foot spray area. And while doing that, I need to time that out. So I did that. So let's take a look. Okay, the average time it took me to cover the 200 feet was 55 seconds. And I can't spell. I came up with that, you know, just did my passes, you know, the four passes, and went ahead and, you know, added those up, divided by four. That came up with 55 seconds. So now we need to dig down into the calculations. So, we need to calculate how fast was I going. First with that is we need to figure out how many feet per second I was traveling. So we we're gonna take the distance, which was 200 feet. We are going to divide that by 55. Okay, so that had me traveling at 3.63 feet per second. So now, using a little bit more math because you know they were actually right in school, is one foot per second, so one FPS, is the same thing as 0.682 miles per hour. So we simply multiply my 3.63 by 0.682, and that comes up with a 2.47 miles per hour. It was just take a container, go out to your sprayer, fire it up, get your PSI dialed in to where you want to spray at. For me, I started at 30 PSI. And so I set, I had it dialed in, we were set at 30 PSI, and I filled up a jug for 55 seconds. Once that was done, shut everything off, came in, and I measured the volume of water. So at the 30 PSI, I collected 1,000 milliliters of water in 55 seconds. So now we need to convert well, the milliliters to gallons. So quick and easy way to do this is, you know, there's 3,785 milliliters in a gallon of water. So what we want to do is we want to take my 1,000, divide that by the 3,785, and that gives me 0.26 gallons. Now that is for each nozzle. So then we take the 0.26, multiply that by number of nozzles, which in my case is three, 
and that gives us a 0.78 gallons per K. K is a thousand. So not quite where I wanted to be with my one gallon per thousand rate, but it was, pr it was pretty close. So I went back, I measured again, I bumped my PSI to 35, did the same 55 second test. With that, that actually gave me 1300 milliliters. So I do the same thing, divided that by 3785, and that gave me a 0.343. So I take the 0.343, Multiply that, again, by three, number of nozzles, and that puts me at 1.027 gallons per minute. So that puts me pretty much right at it, measuring to the thousands. So I know when I want to spray at that coverage, I'm just going to set everything to 35 PSI, and I'll be good. Okay, so wrapping things up, um, the information where I, you know, that I provided to you, I did not come up with myself. I got that from several sources. I got them from Sprayers 101, Texas A&M, the University of Tennessee, and of course, T-Jet, the nozzle manufacturer. So all of those links on what I read to get the information to provide to you, if you want to dive deeper, those will all be down in the description. So I hope you all really enjoyed this. And I do have to give one final shout out to Alan Hain. Yes, I totally ripped off your fart life thing poorly. I can't design anything graphically whatsoever but yes squirt life is a direct ripoff of fert life and yes there is a picture of my sprayer on my sprayer deal with it or i'll make a new logo where there's a picture of the sprayer on the picture of the sprayer on my sprayer okay so i hope you all really really liked what i did and if you do please hit the like button hit the subscribe button and go ahead and ding the bell so you get notified when all my new stuff comes out and until next time, we will see you. Have a good one.